is that a gang sign? Have you, um... Oh, like, you don't know what it is. You don't know what that is. I have no idea. Well, you don't know. Jimmy Fallon doesn't know. David Letterman doesn't know. Well, we don't know. All the comics and show business don't know what this is. <laughs> right? Yeah. What is it? Come on, Jimmy. Seriously. The time is up. People are hip to this kind of stuff. I, I'm here tonight to blow the lid off it, to be the whistleblower. I'm sick and tired of the secrets and the lies. It is the secret symbol of the Luminati, and you're a part of it. For years now, talk show hosts, people on television, people in sitcoms have been hired by the government to throw you off the track, to distract you, to make you laugh and stuff like that, make you happy and docile so you don't know what's really going on. Teaching Satanism in school sounds like the stuff of horror movies, but a US court ruling on religious freedoms has enabled devil worshippers in Florida to hand out educational material about their beliefs to kids at state schools. And followers of the Antichrist seized on the decision to treat all faiths equally. The symbol of the all-mocking tongue. Actually, it's an RFID chip, radio frequency identification. Like they put in dogs. It's the same basic technology. News Garden City Police are investigating the bizarre death of a woman. Her body discovered and a small dog was found right there with her. Now police are hoping that dog's microchip could hold clues and help identify her. In the future, chips will be equipped with GPS, but for now, they simply carry a 16-digit number unique to each client. How much private information can you put in these chips? The applications are unlimited. In the future, we'll be able to track children, the elderly, criminals, immigrants. Welcome to the New World Order. Did you see what just happened there in Canada that Mike died during the American National Anthem before Tuesday night's game between Toronto Maple Leafs and Nashville's Predators? The Toronto fans stepped in and finished our Star Spangled Banner. Well, in the past, the president has stood strong about the limits of his role as commander-in-chief. Remember this? The problem is, is that, um, you know, I'm the president of the United States. I'm not uh, uh, the emperor of the United States. Uh, my job is to execute laws that are passed. But tonight's executive action contradicts this statement. Fox News senior judicial analyst Judge Andrew Napolitano writing today in the Washington Times, quote, the framers required that every president swear to do his job faithfully to serve as a reminder to him that his job requires fidelity to the enforcement of laws, which may he may disagree. Without presidential fidelity to the rule of law, we have a king, not a president. In the years that I've been uh, watching presidents and criticizing them because I disagree with them, I have not seen anything as profound as this. The, the president is a former professor of constitutional law at one of the finest law schools in the world, the University of Chicago Law School. He knows the Constitution very well. He knows that he cannot rewrite the law of the land and he cannot nullify the law of the land and that if the effect of his executive action is the functional equivalent of rewriting sure. it or nullifying it, it's wrong, it's unlawful, it's profoundly unconstitutional and it's disturbing, it's destabilizing. Time to show you some of this morning's headlines. The Wall Street Journal says the director of the NSA expects a dramatic cyber attack on the United States in the next decade. Michael Rogers testified yesterday before the House Intelligence Committee. He said China and one or two other countries are capable of an attack that would shut down our power grid.
that they got the military over here. I don't know what they is doing over here. But they are passing up, doing something. Heavy armor in Ohio's heartland. NBC4 investigates military-grade weapons inside local police departments. The arsenals include handguns, assault rifles, bayonets, and this, an MRAP. Police departments around the state have received more than $67 million worth of military equipment from the Department of Defense in the past 20 years. The equipment is free, but critics claim there might be a much bigger cost, loss of public trust. It became an issue this past summer during the riots in Ferguson, Missouri. When did police departments start looking more like armies? And why? News breaking overnight, a shooting on the campus of Florida State. Three students wounded. The shooter was killed in a showdown with police. There has been a shooting in the library. Overnight, a terrifying are. scene on the we'll campus of Florida State University. Clear. Students we'll huddled in the library on lockdown after gunshots are fired. Oh my God. Three people injured in the gunfire, oh one in critical condition after police say the shooter, acting alone, open fire overnight. Police are still trying to determine a motive for this shooting here on campus that happened just after midnight Thursday morning. What they do know is that in the months leading up to the shooting, the man who opened fire appeared troubled and thought the government was out to get him. Under God, under the gun, a New Jersey family suing its school district saying that the phrase should be removed from the Pledge of Allegiance because it violates this particular family's atheist beliefs. Well, this high school senior won't let it happen. Samantha Jones is leading a different fight to keep the pledge just the way it is, God and all. This is so important to me because I've recited the pledge since I've been like a little kid. Right. Um, the phrase One Nation Under God sums up the history and values that I've always learned about in my history classes because it acknowledges that our rights don't come from the government but from a higher power. Well, Sharon and Micah, these parents tell me that they have no trouble with their son learning the history about any religion. It's when the school starts teaching him the faith. Some Manhattan Beach Middle School parents feel the school has crossed the line. They say they recently discovered their son's homework assignments on Islam were more about actually learning the faith than the history. One question asked him to write down teachings from the Quran. What I saw written in these bubbles was the one true God, Allah, in one of the bubbles. And one of the other bubbles was all people must submit to Allah in another bubble. Now turn the page over and I see the five pillars of Islam. One of the five pillars he had to learn? Shahada is the testimony of a faithful Muslim that Allah is the one true God. It shouldn't be presented to them. They shouldn't be, they shouldn't be asked to know this. Punished for preaching, an Everett teen says his school is violating his rights. Good evening, I'm Marnie Hughes. And I'm David Rose. He claims fellow students and teachers are taking away his freedom of speech. Jamie Tompkins spoke with that teen tonight. And Jamie, is he thinking about taking legal action here? Yes, he is taking legal action. He says he feels students should never feel forced to leave their constitutional rights at the schoolhouse door. Michael Leal says he preaches the message from the gospel every day at school. The senior at Cascade High School in Everett says he was suspended three times in the month of October for preaching and handing out Bible verses during school hours on school grounds. Michael's attorney, Conrad Reynoldson, says this is a violation of his constitutional rights. Curiosity about dozens of Homeland Security vehicles in the parking garage of the Drury Plaza hotels has left a Facebooking member of the hotel staff on the unemployment line. It was certainly a sight that jumped out at Mark Pafrath. It was very odd that there was a bunch of Homeland Security cars there, you know, and I felt I was shocked and took a picture of them in a short video and posted them to Facebook with the status update. He felt it was a harmless post until first he was ordered by his boss to pull down the pictures. Then, a day later, he says he was confronted and fired by the Drury Hotel chain's security chief. He called me a terrorist and said I dishonorably served my country for posting those pictures and the short video. Pafrath, who served three years in the Navy, did not take kindly to that or the next statement. You know, he gave me a threat if I would repost the pictures that I would be locked up and have uh, DHS knock on my door and all that other stuff.
RT International. Now, for the second time in three days, US police have fatally shot an innocent black civilian. This time, a 12 year old boy who was shot in the stomach by a policeman at a playground in Ohio. The youngster later died in hospital. Officers thought he was carrying a lethal firearm, which turned out to be an air gun. This particular type of weapon is powered by compressed gas and fires small bore like aluminium or plastic pellets. The boy allegedly refused to put his hands in the air and instead reached into his waistband, which is when one officer pulled the trigger twice.